All right. Uh, good morning. And this recording is going to be an amendment to the title report review recording that we just finished because Ashley has a series of questions that are all good questions and I think questions that a lot of people have. So we decided we're just going to record it, right? All right. So uh, I'm going to start down here. The below is a quiz. And so the rest of you know, if you're watching this video, I hate quiz. No, I'm kidding. Uh, all right, so number one, seller must provide marketable title, which means when the contract was mutually agreed, the seller had made a commitment to the buyer that they could provide a marketable title. If the title company could not verify the title is marketable, then the escrow has to return the buyer's earnest money. That, Ashley tells me, is a true-false question, and the answer is true. That is true. So even if you're out of contingencies in your offer, if at the end the seller is unable to deliver marketable title, the deal is breached at that point. The contract is breached and the earnest money goes back to the buyer. Number two, is marketable title a clean and clear title? Not specifically. So clean and clear, I'm assuming you're meaning uh, the term free and clear, which really means free of liens. But clean and clear also could mean, it, does it have to have nothing against it? And the answer is no, because paragraph D on form 21 specifies that there can be things against it. So unless otherwise specified in this agreement, title to the property shall be marketable at closing. The following shall not cause, cause the title to be unmarketable. Rights, reservations, covenants, conditions, and restrictions presently of record and general to the area. Easement and encroachments not materially affecting the value of or unduly interfering with the buyer's reasonable use of the property. So they're saying it doesn't have to be clean and clear because you can have all of these sorts of things on it. And we all know in this part of the country and in most parts of the country, uh, easements and CCNRs and those sorts of things are very common because, you know, you, your electrical company wants to have the right to pass over the land to fix stuff if the electric goes out and frankly you want them to do that because your power is out. All right. Number three, most sellers picked their title insurance company to order their title insurance which means by law the seller has to verify their title is marketable through a title company to ensure it is marketable. Or can I say that the county has to receive a copy of the marketable title insurance policy to record conveyance and escrow has to receive the recording numbers to close the transaction to make sure the buyer is receiving marketable title. You're, the, the answer to some of that is yes, some of it's not really, so I'll just kind of explain it a little more um, chronologically. Mm -hmm. They get the title report. They look at it. They see, are there any things on there that would be considered uh, a lien or an encumbrance? You may ask escrow right title two. the title officer is the one that compiled the list that's on the title report he's already deciding which ones he thinks are problematic which ones don't matter because they're easements or CCNRs or whatever so they get that they then start working on making sure they can release and reconvey whatever it is that's on there because if they can't the deal cannot close that means they were unable to give marketable title so they aren't going to send a copy of the title policy down to the county. But in the example on the report that we had, this is the report that we looked at for the earlier recording, there was only one encumbrance that would have to be reconveyed, and that's this deed of trust. So what escrow is going to do is they're going to work to contact whoever the servicer is now, because in this case, Washington Mutual is out of business, right? And they'll get, they'll figure out probably that Chase is now the one servicing the mortgage and they will contact Chase and they'll get a payoff amount. If they get a payoff amount, then they can pay it off and get it reconveyed. If they can't get a hold of anybody, then the, the homeowner might think he's stoked because he's getting out of paying down or paying off a second or a HELOC, uh, but he's not because he can't sell this house until he gets rid of that, right? So you and I can feel comfort that escrow is already working on that. Once they get it paid off and reconveyed, then a final title report 
will be issued, and that's your client's evidence that they have marketable title. So when they receive the uh, final title insurance policy. Exactly. Got it. Right? And it really is an insurance policy. So if where something were to come up a year from now, and it's somebody laying claim to the property from 1997, that date predates this policy, we're, we're covered. And the insurance company would have to deal with them. Does that make sense? All right, number four. The title company simply check and ensure anything recorded. For those encumbrances... There's a sentence on question number three. Buyer's lender and buyer are unnecessary to get a copy if they do not request it. I don't know what you're asking me. So the, if the lender and the buyer are not, rec not requesting a copy of it, then they are not they are not going to get a copy. You know the answer to that one. Yeah, right now, but yesterday right? I did not know it. And the lender will never fail to ask for it. Yes. So he's always going to get it for sure. The buyer is supposed to get it, yeah. but because we're prudent and professional agents, we're going to call and just make sure anytime we're doing a cash deal because we know from experience that sometimes those things fall through the cracks. But it's by law that the seller do not have to give a copy if they do not request it. Like no, no, no. Uh -uh. There's no law. We're not dealing with law. We're dealing with contract, contract law. But okay. what's in the agreement? The agreement says he has to give it. Par okay. Paragraph E Assuming you use Fannie Mae, or I mean uh, MLS forms, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. This this is agreed to. Your buyer signed it, the seller signed it, and what they signed is seller authorizes buyer's lender or closing agent at seller's expense to apply for the then current Alta form of homeowner's policy. Since yours is a cash deal, closing agent's the one that has to do it. And since so many deals are financed, where the lenders are the ones sort of pushing this forward. You're a cash deal, you want to be smart and call the escrow company to make sure it got done. Okay. That's it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. okay? Thank you. Number four. Mm -hmm. Title company simply check and ensure anything recorded. For those encumbrances that were not recorded, the title company could not find it out. What kind of encumbrances could not be recorded? That's a really broad question. There could be lots of stuff, right? Like, I could uh, I could agree to give you a right of first refusal on my house, and we never record it. I could sell my house to Ron, and we never recorded it. I mean, I there there's nothing that guarantees it's if gonna Ron get. If is smart enough, he will record it. Right, he would be a fool not to, right? Yes. So that's why uh, there is language in the title report that says if there's something that's unrecorded then we need to know about it in order to insure against it okay but don't live your life fearful of what might be i know right because you say we need to be positive all the time <laughs> well and it's not just positivity you're taking steps to make sure there's no risk yes and you're buying an insurance policy, you're actually smart, you're making the seller buy an insurance policy to further make sure there's no risk, mm -hmm. right? It is the buyer's responsibility to take care of it. Any unrecorded encumbrances happen before purchase come up after closing. No. No. You're gonna use your your insurance policy. You're gonna have to figure out why the title- insurance, are you talking? No, this is an insurance policy, title insurance. But that That's the exact example I just gave, right? I closed on July 7th. Some fool comes along a year from now and says, I own that land. I have this deed. Ron's example, right? He bought it but didn't record it. The title company is going to deal with him. But it's not recorded, and title company is not insuring anything. Thank God you bought an insurance policy, no, Ashley. I mean, I mean, they they just insure anything recorded in the public record. Right. But if it is not recorded, they, there's no way they can find it out. So they are not insuring that part. They, you have an insurance policy. They are insuring that part. It's like. Uh, there's nothing in this policy that says. Um, the neighbor's driveway 
is not encroaching on your land. Yet, five years from now, I get a survey done on my house and I discover that it is, I'm going to go back to the title pol policy and say, hey, I want the insurance to take care of this. You negotiate with the neighbor. He's either going to have to break up that driveway and remove it, or he's going to have to compensate me because he just stole, you know, 35 square feet of my driveway. Oh, so the insurance company is going to take care of it? The yep. title insurance is going to take care of it? Yes. Hmm. Good to learn. That's why you have insurance. Number so five. What are the differences <laughs> between standard and extended policy on Form 22D? If we do not check any of these boxes, what kind of policy are the seller going to order? Why should we not check any boxes? That's what you said. The seller is planning more if we pick the standard I didn't, policy. I know what I said. I'm going to say it again. You, you <laughs> didn't either hear me or you think I'm lying or I don't know. No. You, 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 I know you read these, right? You need to understand them, and that's what this training is for. So when anytime you read something and it doesn't make sense, I want to, I want to elaborate. So paragraph E on Form 21, Form 28, and I think it's the same paragraph on Form 25, which is the vacant land, 28 is condos, all say the same thing. Seller authorizes buyer's lender or closing agent at seller's expense to apply for the then current Alta form of homeowner's policy of title insurance for one to four family residents. That's the policy. ALTA form, homeowner's policy. That's the type of policy you'll get if you don't check any of the boxes on Form 22D. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's look at Form 22D. <clears throat> if I go to paragraph 2, the title insurance clause in the agreement provides seller is to provide the then current Alta form of homeowner's policy in, uh, of title insurance. The parties have the option to provide less coverage by selecting the standard owner's policy or more coverage by the extended. So if you check that, you're shortchanging your client. And if you check that, you're creating a weakness in your offer. So if you're competing with other offers, the seller could look at that and go, well, shoot, that's going to cost me an extra thousand bucks. I'm, I'm not going to accept your offer. So we, as a firm, we don't check either. So the outer form of homeowner's policy yep. have two kinds. One is standard, the other one is standard policy. No, three kinds. Standard is less than the outer form. Oh. And extended, basically the difference is extended includes a survey. Oh, okay. So if I have a reason to think the neighbor's driveway is across my mm -hmm. lot, mm -hmm. then I should get the extended. Well, then you have a survey. It takes longer and it costs more money, though. But if you are listing a house that uh, you say the listing agent is ordering the title on the uh, preliminary title on behalf of the seller, so that is out of uh, form. Out of form of homeowner's, homeowner's policy. policy. Yeah. policy. But if we check the first the standard policy that we are having seller to pay more, what do you mean? No, the second box. The first, right? The standard first policy. is cheaper and weaker coverage. The second is greater extended. and extended and right? more expensive. Yeah. Okay. So if we if the listing agent had the seller to check the first box, so that is cheaper. Right. Cheaper for the seller. Okay. So the default uh -huh. is the Alta homeowner's policy. Mm -hmm. If you check the first box, it's the Alta owner's policy, which is less coverage. And if you check the second box, it's the Alta extended coverage, which is more. Mm -hmm. So which one is the cheapest one? <laughs> we don't. I, I don't just, check them. Ever. I just. I just told you. 
<laughs> I, I can tell the disappointment from your face. No. I, I really lost my mind. It's not a disappointment. I'm something else. Right? It's you shock get, and dismay. You get, you get that policy that they're... The parties have the option to <coughs> provide <coughs> less coverage by selecting yes. the standard owner's policy. Okay. Or more coverage by selecting the extended policy. Okay, so the cheapest one is So the default policy. is in the middle. Okay. The homeowner's policy. Okay. Standard okay. owner's policy it's is cheaper. cheaper uh -huh. And the extended policy is more expensive. Okay. And I am moving on. That's why I say I would love to learn English from you. Ah. <laughs> it's English My lesson. wife would tell you that I'm, I'm not very good at it. Oh, really? She's a reading teacher, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, pair, or number five. Quiz number six. So we, you just explained number five. Yeah. So you're good with number five? Yeah, so okay. I think so. We can revisit it as many times as you like. I just don't want to put it on the recording seven okay, times. that's fine. Because right now there's people listening to this going, yes, okay. why doesn't she get it? All right. What are the differences between preliminary title, title commitment, and title insurance, and when, are, when they are issued? Those are all terms used for different purposes, but they all revolve around the same insurance policy. Title insurance policy. So you get a preliminary title report, which tells you about all the encumbrances, any exclusions, what the insurance company is saying, here's what we know, and we will insure. Right? So preliminary title report is just a list. The title insurance policy is what goes into force upon closing. That's when it takes effect. And then you get a final title report, which shows not what used to be on it, but what's on it now, because they've reconveyed deeds, they've added your client's name as the vestee, those sorts of things. What, what is the title uh, commitment for? Since we have preliminary... That's title what this is. It is a title commitment, a commitment to insure. That's okay. just a term. They've made a title commitment, right? Because think about it. The preliminary title is not the policy itself yet. Okay. It's a commitment. They're saying, remember the first few paragraphs, it said, if a sale were to close and the premium were to be paid, okay. we will make this policy. Okay. So that's why they're using okay. the term commitment. Okay. So the just effect day is different, so that cause the, yeah. the function of the commitment is different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the commitment is like forward looking, right? They're saying, if you do these things, we'll ensure. Then escrow goes and does those things. They get clear the, the deeds, they they order a date down for the day of closing, so that commitment is right up to the minute. Like, did you notice that it said May 25th at 8 a.m.? Yes. Right? So this, this is all very precise because yes. it's chronological. Right. So he could have a lien dated July 6th at 10.41 a.m., and if mine is dated July 6th at 10.42 a.m., He's in first position, I'm in second position, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, if, if we go down to record him at the same time, and I elbow him out of the way, and I get mine recorded, now mine's in first position. Okay. Right? Okay. Right. So what time was the uh, issue? So the preliminary, probably just when they list it, right? Right. So the title commitment is, when they open the account, the, the uh, title company will provide that. And the last one, the insurance policy will be, will be the one that the title company provide upon the closing. Yep. The final title report is your title insurance policy. Yes. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. I'm Number so glad I clarified that. Me too. Okay. Thank you. Number seven. If a buyer did not request a copy of the title insurance policy and some encumbrances came up one or two years later and the buyer has no idea if it was recorded or not, what should the buyer do? Well, it depends if there was an insurance policy obtained. So you would start by looking at the settlement statement and you would see whether there was an insurance policy or not. Because remember, the insurance is covering the seller and the buyer. They're covering the property. And so depending on what comes up and when it came into effect, it might affect the seller, not the buyer, right? So you start by making sure you have a policy. But the ESCO cannot close the transaction without the insured insurance policy, is that right? They shouldn't. 
But on a cash deal, it happens. So that's why you've got to make sure it doesn't happen. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Could he request a copy from the title company, again, to clarify if it is recorded or not? I don't know what you're asking for a copy of. Oh, the I title mean, policy? Yes. So the title policy doesn't get recorded. No, I mean, it just if, goes if into they force. Notice, do not record it, and they something come up, and they don't know if because I was confused. I think the thing is recorded, then the insurance company will cover it. If it is not recorded, then they are not covering it. But what you explained is, it is not like that. It depends what it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So There's lots of great classes put on by the title companies themselves. Okay. So you, I would recommend you go to one of those too. Okay. So let's press on them. Does the title company have to provide a copy by law? So no, you're you're using the term law. They have a contractual obligation, but it's not the title company's obligation. It's the seller's. So these steps have to be taken in order to get the title company to issue the policy. Okay. Who is supervising title insurance and escrow companies? Say, um, the, insurance the insurance commissioner. Commissioner. Yeah. Okay. Of the government, state government, right? Yep. Okay. What are the benefits for the seller to pick their own insurance and escrow companies by themselves? There really isn't much of the benefit. There's okay. escrow companies are. Um, they're. It's not that they're less regulated, but there's more um, competition because we have uh, independent escrows here too. Yes. So you don't. You don't have to use. CW title and CW escrow or next title and next title escrow. Mm -hmm. You could use next title for title mm -hmm. and then use escrow professionals, which is an independent escrow. They're not owned by a title company. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think they might have been bought by a title company. But anyway, there are independent escrow companies that you could use. Mm -hmm. So are there benefits? Mm, they're, they're all pretty good. So I don't know that there's any huge benefits. You want to, as an agent, have a relationship with an escrow company that likes and appreciates your business and wants to take great care of you. That's what Next Title does for Miller Lane agents. They value our agency, our firm, and so they're going to give you better service yeah, than I anyone can tell else. Because when the listing agent assigned a, um, um, a title company and I send email to them, ask questions, and they are not so responsive. Right. So I can tell who assigned them, then they work for something. They don't value your yes, business, exactly. right? Yes. Which is a shame because yeah. they could make a new customer exactly. out of you, right, if yeah. they did a good job. I'm, not, I'm still going to use next title. <laughs> good answer. All right. Uh, what are the benefits? We're going to talk about that. Should the buyers believe the company picked by the seller? Yeah. They're all, they're all regulated so that yes. you're not really at a disadvantage, yes. but as you experience, you don't get great service. So, so ESCO is supervised by the same? Not by the insurance commissioner. They're supervised by uh, DOL, I think. DOL. DOL. Same okay. people that regulate us. Okay. Department of Licensing. Oh, okay. Good. Let's keep going. All right. <laughs> is there anything the buyer needs to worry about? For the attached title okay. commitment, should a cash buyer wait for the title commitment is available, then submit the earnest money? No. No, you You do not have to you wait. have to submit the earnest money in, in whatever time frame you agreed yes. to. Right? Yes. So yes. what what did you agree to? Yeah, we of course two days. Right. Yeah. Two days or they can give it to you and then you get three more. Yes, right? so that is five days. Um, what are the things that needs to be worried about on a title commitment? So we, we already recorded this yes. and went through the attached title commitment. So if you're watching this video, just look for the video entitled um, Title Policy Review or something like that. And other than that, uh, that was a great series of questions, Ashley, and I'm sure a lot of people probably shared them. So well thought out and numbered and 